Okay, so I'm gonna have a shoulder, which is gonna be a fixed point, a hand, which is gonna be our target for the IK arm, and then an elbow, which is gonna be the position that we need to determine with our inverse kinematics. So we'll say let shoulder equal 100, x, or x is 100, y is 300, and we'll say let hand equal uh, x will be 300 and y will be like 250. All right, and then we want an elbow. So we'll say let elbow, uh, it's an object with an x property that'll be 200 and a y 200. Right, and then we can draw lines connecting all these. So we'll do a line from shoulder.x, shoulder.y to elbow.x, elbow.y. And then we'll do a line from elbow.x, elbow.y to hand.x, hand.y. And nice. Okay, and then um, I'll do circles as well. We'll do a circle at the shoulder. Cool. And we'll do it at this uh, radius or diameter of 20. We'll do it at the hand and the elbow as well. So one at the elbow and one at the hand. Give it a higher stroke weight. Okay, so now I want to be able to grab this and move this around. So we're gonna need mouse, some mouse pressed action. So we'll say if, if mouse is pressed, and, um, okay, so if the mouse is currently being pressed, then if the distance from the mouse position, mouse x, mouse y to hand x, hand y is less than 20, then hand.x equals mouse x and hand.y equals mouse y. Okay, great. Now we don't want the, this, uh, our forearm to keep shortening and like changing length. We want obviously the lengths of the upper arm and the forearm to remain fixed and adjust accordingly. So we, we need to know what these distances are. So I'll say uh, upper arm is the distance from the shoulder to the elbow. And forearm is the distance from the elbow to the hand. So now that we know those, then we want to think about, uh, we also know the distance from the shoulder to the hand. We can just calculate that distance. So this distance here, say, A light stroke weight. So we want to think about this distance. We know this distance on every frame. We'll know the distance from the shoulder to the hand, and we know the distances of the upper arm and forearm. So we know the three side lengths of this triangle. We can use the law of cosines to figure out any angle of the triangle that we want. So we could figure out this angle here. And once we have that angle, then if we also knew the angle between um, 
between this line, the line between the shoulder and the hand, and the just the horizontal. So like. We know this angle, we'll find this angle from the log cosines, and we can find this angle from the inverse tangent of like this little triangle here. And then we can use this complete angle, this angle plus this angle, to find the position of the elbow, since we know the length of the upper arm, and we know the position of the shoulder. So we can just take the position of the shoulder plus this x component and this y component, which can be calculated with this angle. So let's write a function to do that. So we'll make a function called ik for inverse kinematics. And it's going to take an a, a b, so these two points that we know, which are a and b. a is the shoulder, which is fixed. b is the hand, which can move around. And then we're going to take the three lengths of the triangle, a, b, and c, which are, so a is opposite angle A and B is opposite angle B, and then C is our elbow, and so C is the distance. And then we will say let theta equal, and we have to rearrange the law of cosines here to solve for the angle, and you get B squared, oh, these are the lengths, not the points, B squared plus B squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2 times b times c. So inverse cosine of that will give us this angle. And then we can say let phi equal a tan 2 of, so we know b dot y and a dot y. So we'll say b dot y minus a dot y and b dot x minus a dot x. But b dot x, here b is greater, the x value is greater than the, the b value is greater than the a value, but for the y component, uh, the way that p5 works, y is down. So we actually need to flip this component to be negative for this to work. Um, okay. With that in mind, then we're going to return. We're going to return an, an object with the points x and y for the elbow. So the x component is just going to be a dot x. So we're starting here, and then we want this value plus b times cosine of this angle, right? Which is theta plus phi. And then for the y component, it's going to be the same thing, but with sine. Okay, so now, while we're adjusting this, we can also adjust, oh, and this is, a, this needs to be a dot y, and it needs to be minus, because again, y is flipped in B5, because this is the positive y direction down. Okay, hope that makes sense. Um, so now here we can just say elbow equals ik of shoulder, hand, upper arm, oops, opposite of the shoulder is the forearm, upper arm, and then the distance from the shoulder to the hand. And there we go. Now we have some inverse kinematics. And this is for the up arm configuration, and it would be similar for the down arm. Uh, it would just be a function that looks similar to this, but you'd have to just think about uh, the math in a little bit of a different way. I actually have another video on that, if you're curious, that just goes over, there's no code, but it just goes over like the logic behind this. So yeah, I hope that this was helpful.
Thanks for watching.